to welcome everybody to this meeting. Uh, and then we said today we are going to get a briefing from the department. We are going to hear what their plan is, what they, they did the uh, previous year and what are they intending to do. So by so saying, uh, honorable members, I am not going to waste time because we are dealing with the department. The most important uh, presentation, honorable minister, it's from department. And then from your entities, we want to get uh, information about the entities, what they are doing, how are they perform performing, what are they intending to do this uh, financial year. So, but the most important presentation, we are going to dwell much on the department. So I am not going to waste Recording time. Recording in progress. Um, any apologies from our side, Amanda? Do we have any apology? No, Chair, I have not received any apologies. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister, from your side, uh, do we have any apology? Um, no, I, I don't, I haven't been made aware. Maybe, DG, do you have any apologies? Good morning, Minister, Honorable Chair and uh, members. We have, we don't have apologies from our side, uh, in exception of uh, possibly the CEO of Isimangaliso, uh, but the CFO is here. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister. No, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, Minister, without wasting time, let me give uh, you the opportunity to start doing a political overview uh, over your department. And then from there, you will give your somebody who's going to present is either DG or somebody who will be assigned presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Chairperson, and good morning to all honorable members. Um, Chairperson, yeah, I am together in this meeting with our Deputy Minister, uh, Deputy Minister Sotu, our Director General. Um, we also have all of our DDGs of branches are with us. Um, we also have the CEOs of our entities, uh, Mr. Abada from the Weather Service, uh, Mr. Munjetsi from Sanbi, and Ms. Sello, the newly appointed CEO of Sandparks. As you have heard, Chairperson, um, the CEO of Isimangaliso has had a family bereavement. And um, he is unlikely to be with us today, but the CEO will, will be doing the presentation. Chairperson, um, you had advised that we should table before the committee the full APPs for all entities and also for the department, which we have done. But we are not going to go through uh, chapter and verse of those presentations. They are extremely long. Um, what we are going to do is we are going to do an overview presentation on the work that the department is doing in provinces. And also the entities will tell you what they are doing in provinces and also some of the key challenges they face and how they're solving those challenges. We do note, Chairperson, that we received early this morning an analysis from the committee of the APPs and the budget, together with specific questions for branches. Uh, what we have agreed with DG is that the DDGs will answer those questions um, if, if you want us to uh, orally. Where we don't have information immediately to hand, we will submit in writing because we only received this presentation this morning. So we haven't had an opportunity to prepare. But if you are comfortable, Chair, um, the yeah, DG- I'm, I'm, I'm reading it again now. 
Uh, Mr. Kutu, can you mute? Um, sorry, Minister. Um, sorry, sorry for that, Minister. I was just asking somebody who was not uh, muting his uh, mic or her mic, they must mute. You can continue, sorry for that, ma'am. No problem. Um, so what, what, um, what we will do is, uh, DJ will, will present the overview and then we will get the, the branches to respond one by one to the questions that the, that the committee have submitted to us where we have that information immediately available. Um, so if you, if you are comfortable with that, we will take that approach and then we will go through the entities one by one. Is that acceptable? Minister, um, uh, I asked the question, and then that's when the, uh, your team will answer them. You can continue, ma'am. Thank you very much. Let me hand over to the Director General. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Uh, good morning uh, to yourself, Minister, the Deputy Minister. And thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson and members uh, for giving us this opportunity for us to take you through our plans for the year 2023-2024. Uh, uh, I don't know whether Secretariat will assist me with flighting the presentation. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Um, just moving to the next slide, uh, as already highlighted by yourself, Honorable Chair and Minister, we are going to take the select committee on the plans for the next uh, financial year, which is the, the, the one that has commenced now in, in, in April. Uh, I will cover the extent at which the department continues to align uh, the work of the department to government priorities uh, uh, where we look at the MTSF and also what then are the DFFE uh, outcomes, uh, which then are aligning uh, to these government priorities. Uh, and these will be covered at a high level. Um, I will then go into the budget, uh, which then informs the resources, financial resources that are going to uh, enable the department to then carry out the work for 23, 24 and achieve the outputs as, as outlined in our APP. Also, I'm going to cover human resource uh, information. We feel this is very critical in terms of ensuring that we are properly capacitated to carry out the work uh, of the department. Uh, there is a summary of all the APP targets uh, in as far as the uh, 2023 financial year is concerned. Uh, moving into the individual branches, uh, we have highlighted the, the outputs where I am going to request through yourself, Chairperson, that the individual uh, DDGs will cover at a high level what are those APP targets that we are going to be achieving. But specifically also following that uh, is around uh, what is it that uh, the various branches are implementing uh, or intend to implement at a provincial level. Uh, and to also respond uh, to the questions, uh, those that they'll be able to respond to, uh, informed by the analysis that has been done by the select committee. I will then also, Chair, come back and, and cover certain aspects uh, on how we have had to revise the strategic plan as part of continuous alignment. It's not going to be long, and I'll go into the detail budget uh, for the department, and that will bring this whole presentation to a conclusion. Next slide, please. Can we move straight to slide four? Uh, 
Um, and as already highlighted, uh, uh, we, we as a department uh, have uh, finalized our APP, also tabled in parliament uh, through the speaker. And this uh, takes into consideration alignment to MTSF and also uh, the ERRP and the state of the nation uh, uh, address commitments. Also critical to outline is that this is the final year of the uh, current administration. And therefore it's critical for us to ensure that we beginning or we continue to uh, consolidate our performance in realizing the vision towards 2030 and also the implementation uh, of the strategic plan which I'm going to cover the revisions uh, that uh, we, we have actually made in that strategic plan. We've also added an outer year, which will then assist the transition beyond the current administration. The next slide. Our mandate chair uh, and members, uh, we derive it. I think this is uh, uh, information we've shared with the committee before. We derive it from the constitution, um, uh, mainly chapter two uh, of the Bill of Rights and also section 24. And I'm not going to go necessarily through the details, but as a department, our vision is to ensure that uh, we have a prosperous, equitable society that is living in harmony with our natural resources. And this, we, will, we achieve this vision through providing leadership in environmental management, uh, uh, conservation, and protection towards uh, sustainability of the benefits of uh, uh, the South African uh, citizens and, and, and community. And those are the values that we continue as a department to uphold uh, as already outlined clearly in our strategic plan. Now in the next slide, as I had indicated, our alignment, there's uh, Six out of the, I mean, there's five out of the seven uh, uh, priorities that we we align ourselves to, and I'm going to outline uh, some of the aspects, uh, not necessarily all of them, but uh, some of the critical aspects informing the individual priorities uh, of government. The first priority around um, a capable and an ethical developmental state. Uh, as a department, we are going to continue to pursue uh, good governance, uh, issues of compliance with laws and also effective financial management. Yes, uh, Chair, we are aware that as a department, we have had negative audit opinion, external opinion, and these have been with the department as way back as uh, um, 2016, 2017. However, we believe that we are on track towards achieving a better opinion for, for the department, uh, given that the qualification matters have reduced in numbers, and we are hoping we are going to be in a position. Where the assistant referred to portfolio committees, and portfolio committees assist in the issues, of course, um, updates were given at the meeting of the any of the other program committee. Jefferson, I think there's yes. someone who's not muted. The subcommittee on the review of joint Mr. The subcommittee will give a report on those measures. Mr. Sifore, there are aspects that are administrative that will be dealt with by the administration. Uh, and there are also aspects that um, uh, Mr. Sephora, Mr. Sephora, can you assist us and mute? The joint post committee. No, he's busy. The last item dealt with was the incident in the house of 30th August. That matter is currently before the past few years. Yeah, I will. And I will. Hello, oh, sorry. Hello. Hi, Asuka. Sorry, my, my please mute. Can you hear me? Yeah, Thanks. No, sorry for that, DG. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. 
Th thank, thank, thanks, Chair. Um, now, I was still on the first uh, uh, alignment on the first priority, where as a department we are pursuing uh, to uh, look um, to, to achieve uh, a better opinion uh, in as far as the external audit is concerned, given the history and the legacy challenges that the department has had in the past years. Uh, in addition to that, as a department, we also want to ensure that we have adequately skilled uh, workforce, which is transformed uh, and is a representative of South African race and gender demographics. Uh, and key to this is the 50% female uh, at SMS level uh, as a representation, but also achieving the 2% uh, uh, of people, uh, of persons with uh, disability. The second part uh, is priority two on economic transformation and, and job uh, creation. Here, what's critical is the various master plans that we've implemented, we're implementing as a department. We are in a process of implementing the forestry master plan, but also key is the work of consultation extensively, which has uh, taken uh, a bit of time uh, in as far as the ocean's economy, given the extent of the various stakeholders that are involved uh, in uh, trying to pull together this master plan. And, and hopefully uh, by the end of this uh, uh, administration, we would have a finalized plan that can be implemented uh, moving forward. Um, also key uh, is around uh, decent jobs that needs to be created and sustained. In those decent jobs as a department, we also looking at focusing on youth, women, persons uh, with disability, uh, which uh, uh, will is a priority. And those are the numbers that we have set ourselves in our APP, 35,477. Uh, full-time equivalent jobs to be created and also 71,035 work opportunity. And, and in those work opportunities as a department, the focus is ensuring that uh, we, we, we have about 60% of those beneficiaries uh, being women. The, the third one is priority three on uh, education skills and health where we are looking at improve uh, human resource uh, capacity uh, in the sector. And sector mainly, we look at training in the biodiversity sector, where we would want to train about 400 uh, biodiversity beneficiaries in the current year on various areas. Uh, and, and that can be alluded to by the, the, the DDG concerned. Also key is our internship program. Uh, we have an internship program that commenced in 22-23 and it's for two years. So we have 212 interns on board uh, and they conclude their second year in the year under uh, a report, which is 23-24 and 50% of those intents uh, um, uh, must uh, be uh, women. Um, the other aspect uh, here is around the threat on environment, uh, environmental quality and human health uh, mitigation. And here we look at our waste management programs, uh, focusing on waste reduction, but also key is our continuous monitoring program on the air quality and management around air quality, air quality matters. The next slide looks at the alignment to uh, a priority uh, five uh, on spatial and integrated um, uh, human settlement and local government. Our focus here mainly is around local government where we do uh, uh, training sessions, engagements uh, with uh, uh, municipal councillors, mainly on the issues of waste, given that uh, waste management is also a key uh, competency for, for, for local government. We also then have identified 29 uh, municipal uh, cleaning campaigns to be to be conducted uh, in in the current in the year under report. The last is a better Africa and a better world, uh, where as a department we have to provide leadership, working very closely with other key stakeholders on pursuing a just, a just transition. 
uh, um, to a low uh, uh, carbon uh, economy. And, and part of that is the JET IP, which is currently uh, led by the presidency. But as a department, we are a, a, a major, we play a major role uh, in, in, supporting, in supporting the implementation of, of, of the uh, just transition. Um, the other um, aspect also uh, linked to that is around the implementation of uh, the white paper on biodiversity, uh, conservation, and sustainable use. Uh, that's going to be a key focus in the in the current in the current uh, year. Um, we, as a department, through bilateral agreements, uh, uh, have um, also aiming to are aiming to raise about eight million uh, dollars, and and those resources are resources that come from different. Uh, uh, sources internationally, uh, mainly to fund uh, environmental programs, not only for the department, but also for our entities, for other departments, but also DFIs uh, are part of a uh, uh, dis disbursing institution like your DBSA in as far as these resources are concerned. The next slide then uh, outlines Honorable uh, Chaperson and members our budget for 23-24. I'm going to go into the detail of this budget uh, in the latter part of the presentation. We have a budget of 9.8 billion. And what one would want to highlight is that uh, majority of our budget uh, is in program six, environmental programs, uh, 3.2 billion, and also program five, uh, biodiversity uh, and conservation. And that is where uh, our entities as our implementing vehicle uh, for the mandate of the department uh, source uh, their, 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 their um, uh, funds. So a number of funds in these two program uh, uh, are transferred uh, to entities to enable our entities uh, to fulfill their respective mandates. But I'm going to go into detail uh, towards the end of the presentation on this budget. Also critical, um, honorable members, uh, Chaperson, in the next slide is the human resource information where we are highlighting uh, the departmental workforce, which is quite key in terms of us uh, implementing uh, uh, the programs, but also carrying out our mandate. We do have uh, the total, um, total staff and post or total posts of uh, 3,646. This uh, is excluding uh, frozen uh, posts. Posts that are frozen are mainly uh, posts that are not funded, but also we need to be uh, uh, maintaining our personnel within a ceiling, which National Treasury has set across all government departments to try and curtail uh, uh, unnecessary uh, uh, increase in personnel costs uh, across, across uh, government. We have 3,355 of the 3,646 posts uh, filled, uh, which then result uh, in, to a vacancy rate of about 7.9%, which translate to the 291 posts uh, outlined uh, in the presentation. Also critical is our employment equity uh, as a department, the percentage of women uh, at SMS level, we're currently sitting at 46. Uh, we are hoping that we, we need to work towards a, the, the target of 50% in 23, 24, and same applies to disability is we are at 1.9 and hopefully we are going to be achieving our 2% um, uh, target uh, for, for, for disability. The next slide. Um, here we are just outlining the uh, out, out the targets that we have in our APP per program uh, and from program one to program nine and program nine uh, also uh, include additional targets uh, 
um, which then translate to the program uh, or APP for the Marine uh, Living Resource Fund. Uh, and the DDG is going to go into details in terms of uh, what is entailed in the Marine Les Resource uh, Living uh, Fund. However, uh, as a total, uh, at a departmental level, we have 71 targets, and we've come a long way in relation to these targets, where we have tried to eliminate targets that are operational in nature, in nature and uh, focus on strategic targets, so that then these are targets that, uh, when implemented, needs to ensure that there is uh, uh, service delivery on the ground and there is uh, impact realized uh, on the ground. Um, with your permission, Chef, in the next, I'm going to request briefly uh, the DDGs then to take to take the individual uh, branches. Can I request Pumutsa to, to mute? Thank you. Um, um, I'm going to request Honorable Chair, uh, the individual, because we've got nine uh, programs. The DDGs will quickly cover uh, the targets we're setting for 22, 23, but also the programs that we are implementing as a department uh, at a provincial level and respond to some of the questions where they have been raised by the select committee as part of the detailed analysis that we have received this morning, uh, uh, Chairperson. With your permission, can I request the CFO to cover the first uh, with the DDG uh, 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 CMS to cover the first part? Thank you, Chair. Do that, uh, DG. And DG, those answers, uh, the questions that you are unable to answer them, you can put it in writing and then send us to, to us before Friday. We'll do so, Chairperson. Thank you. We'll do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Um, good morning, Honorable Chairperson and members, Honorable Minister and Honorable DM, DG and colleagues. I will be taking you through um, the next slide, please. The targets for the Office of the CFO. Uh, we are residing in Program 1, where we are responsible to promote good governance and compliance with laws and regulations, and also managing the effective financial management throughout the department. We have two targets in the 2023-24 APP, whereby we are committing um, and striving to ensure that we obtain a, an unqualified external audit opinion from the Office of the Auditor General. As the DG indicated, since 2016-17 financially, the department has been qualified. However, we have put in place controls and measures. As a result, we are reducing the number of qualification items with the target to ensure that we obtain an unqualified audit opinion in 2023-24 financial year. Also, the second target for the Office of the CFO is that from the 9.8 billion that has been allocated to the department, we are committing that we will achieve 98% of that target, assisting and supporting the core functions in delivering their mandate. So those are the two targets that we have set for ourselves in the APP. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and members. Thank you, DG. Thank you. Thank you, CFO. Um, can the DDG follow uh, swiftly? Thanks, um, Honorable Chair, uh, Minister, DM, and Honorable uh, Members. DDG, we can't hear you. Can you just raise your voice a bit so that we can hear you? Thank you. Person, I'm not sure. I don't think we're hearing uh, the DDG. Um, I, um, I can uh, take the committee through uh, the remaining part on administration. The, 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 the outcome I've already highlighted in terms of the percentage of women 
um, uh, uh, at SMS level, we in the year 23-24 are aiming for 50%. And we have uh, put in place plans with the branches to ensure that we move towards ensuring that we achieve 50% of our uh, establishment uh, um, to, um, to be uh, women uh, officials. Uh, Two percent uh, has been set as a target for for disability, and also what we also looking at in twenty three twenty four is awarding of uh, bursaries, uh, and this uh, will look at both full time and also part time in order to ensure that we improve human capacity within the sector. Uh, is already targeted. Uh, thank you, Chair. We can move to the next slide. Program two, uh, DDG, uh, regulatory. Can I request through yourself, Chairperson? Thank you, DG. Good morning, uh, Honorable Chair, members, Minister, Deputy Minister, and colleagues. My program is responsible for the promotion of the development of enabling legal regime as well as the licensing authorization system that will promote enforcement compliance and also ensure good uh, coordination of sector performance. Next slide. Uh, we have five targets. The first target deals with environmental authorizations inspected for compliance. We've set a target of 170. We have uh, a target of finalized criminal investigation dockets that are handed over to the NPA for prosecutorial decision making. And this is set at 46. B, um, I'm going to switch off my video uh, if there's disruption. Sorry, Chair. Um, the number of administrative enforcement notices issued uh, for non-compliance with environmental legislation, we have a target of 270. And the number of inspections conducted for verification of rhino horns as well as elephant tusks stockpiles is set at 65. In terms of uh, ensuring that we improve human resource capacity for the sectors, we have a target of 720 officials that we want to train with regard to environmental compliance and enforcement. Uh, the next slide. In this slide, we are outlining some of the projects that we have outlined uh, to assist provinces and municipalities. Uh, we want to ensure compliance and enforcement training for provincial and municipal EMIs. Also training on the implementation of an integrated national compliance and enforcement information system for national and provincial EMIs. This system will capture a, a compliance and enforcement action that is taken throughout uh, nationally, provincially by EMIs which will also assist us in ensuring that there is better coordination and also if there are assistance required in a particular area where the performance is not at the level that we expect, we will provide more training and support in that regard. Uh, we also look at the clarification of the constitutional mandate specifically for municipal EMIs, and this is done through engagement with SALGA, et cetera. There are operational support to provinces in relation to national priority areas, as well as complex uh, inter-provincial investigations, which our team also provides support to. With regard to the provision of compliance status by the various landfill site, this function is done jointly with provinces, as this is a matter that falls within their mandate. However, we do provide support to the provinces uh, and we, by consolidating the compliance and enforcement status of these landfill sites and where there are capacity constraints, we will assist as well. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and members. Uh, we're moving to the program three, Oceans and Coasts. The DDG, uh, Dr. Figizolo, will take the committee through this program. Um, good morning, uh, uh, Honorable Chair and uh, Honorable Minister and the Deputy Minister and uh, the DG and colleagues. I will take you through the presentation of Program 3, which is Oceans and Coasts. And with your permission, uh, Honorable Chair, may I please switch off the um, 
the video um, part of this. Okay. No problem. Thank you. All right, uh, the purpose of program three, which is Oceans and Coast, is to promote, manage, and provide strategic leadership on oceans and coastal conservation. And we have 10 targets. And uh, the first one is uh, annual consolidated water quality report for uh, 40 priority areas across the four coastal provinces, which is KZN, the Eastern Cape, Western Cape and, and the Northern Cape. And the second one is uh, Marine Special Planning Sub-Regional Plan, which will be submitted to the Director General for approval to Gazette for public comments. And it will be the first marine uh, area plan. And we, over the next uh, uh, couple of years, we are planning to have four more. And uh, then um, it's two draft MPAs, which are to be submitted, um, that is marine protected areas management plans, which are to be submitted to the minister for approval. And those are the Southeast Atlantic Seamounts and uh, the Southwest Indian Seamounts with our offshore marine protected areas management plans. And uh, then it will be um, one biodiversity management plan, which is a, a revised African penguins um, biodiversity management plan, which is going to be submitted to the minister as well. And uh, then we are planning to have uh, annual, annual monitoring report for four estuary management plans, which will be for the Buffalo Estuary uh, in the Eastern Cape, Deben Bay uh, and Richards Bay, which will be in the KwaZulu-Natal province, as well as the Orange River in the Northern Cape. And uh, then there is going to be the amendment of uh, the, the draft amendment document to the Antarctic Treaties Act, uh, which we are planning on developing uh, during the course of this year as one of our targets. And of course, there will be uh, peer reviewed uh, uh, scientific publications, 20 of them uh, for the year. And um, we are also planning on having a research report on additional oceans and coastal protection, um, which we are going to produce. Uh, that will be talking to potential marine protected areas or areas that are that can be developed to be marine protected areas. But there's, there, has, uh, there has to be um, a scientific background as to where and how we can be able to develop those, but we are planning on uh, having that kind of report uh, before the, the, the end of the financial year. And uh, then uh, three relief uh, and science voyages uh, to the South African National Antarctic Expedition, Gough Island and Marion Island, which is going to be undertaken uh, between uh, now and uh, the end of the financial year, as well as uh, annual science report card on key essential oceans and coast variables, which will be published online. Next slide, please. So with regards to uh, work that we do, sorry, with regards to work that we do or projects that we do with the provinces, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, we do have uh, various sites along the coast, coastline in the four coastal provinces. At the moment, we're talking about 30, and this is initial screening to determine basic health and functioning of rivers leading to estuaries and uh, uh, shore areas. A program is slowly building on a database on background information on water quality in coastal provinces where we're looking at contaminants, um, um, heavy ions, and uh, a, a whole range of microbials. And uh, then uh, we are also planning on restarting a program which, uh, a project which uh, has stalled over the past couple of years uh, due to a various, uh, a various number of reasons, uh, which is the tidal pool in Port St. John's in the Eastern Cape. And uh, Port St. John's over recent decades has experienced several shark attacks. And uh, now the, the, the tidal pool was meant to be a safer uh, bathing space uh, for, 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 for people around Port St. John's, but as well uh, for, 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 for tourism activities. 
the branch is aiming to restart the scoping and planning around the building of this tidal pool uh, in 2023 and uh, 2024. And um, work is going to continue uh, provincial parks agencies to manage uh, marine protected areas. As uh, members, you're aware, uh, the um, management plans, when we develop them, the implementation is done mainly by uh, various uh, management agencies. Uh, those include, include sand parks as well as um, Eastern Cape Parks and Tourism Agency and, 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 and others. Um, and yeah, currently work is with uh, SM Velocas or Natal Wildlife, Eastern Cape Parks, uh, Western Cape, uh, Cape Nature, plus Isimangali, so if, as, as I've mentioned. Um, yeah, that, that, that will be all from my side for now. Thank you, um, Honorable Chair and the DG. Thank you, thank you Chairperson. Uh, our next program is program four, uh, climate change uh, and air quality and sustainable development. Um, um, Mr. Gekan is going to take the committee through the details of this program in terms of what we have planned. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, DG. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Chair and Minister, Deputy Minister, and uh, uh, extending my greetings to honorable members. Uh, program four uh, that deals with climate change, equality, and sustainable development. Our purpose uh, is very clear to lead, promote, inform, monitor, and review mainstreaming of environmental sustainability, uh, low carbon emissions, and climate resilience and air quality in South Africa's transition. So that's what. Uh, uh, our purpose is, uh, DG has already uh, highlighted that we have uh, uh, six targets or we've lifted six targets. Uh, the first one uh, is around uh, um, the issue of uh, uh, mitigation, uh, where we are busy in a process of uh, uh, coming up with sectoral emission targets. Uh, which we aim to publish uh, by the end of this financial year. And on the adaptation uh, front, uh, we have in, an intervention on ocean and coastal adaptation plan, uh, which we aim to develop. Uh, but also uh, there is a, um, a very important uh, target on uh, risk reduction and vulnerability assessment in five human settlements in the priority areas. Uh, and coming to the air quality, uh, our, our target there is to ensure that uh, the Republic, the, the state of air quality in the Republic is uh, uh, less than one, uh, meaning uh, we have air quality. Uh, but the second one in that regard is also on the um, issue of this uh, air quality monitoring station in, in 15 priority areas. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, at least 75% uh, uh, we can, uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, stations, uh, they meet uh, the, the, the data recovery that equals to 75%. Uh, currently, we, we've been having challenges uh, in, in uh, reaching this target because of issues such as uh, load shedding and vandalism um, on uh, of these uh, uh, quality monitoring stations. And the last target relates to um, uh, the resources that are needed for implementation. Uh, and uh, our target for this year uh, is to raise uh, around 80 million uh, US dollar uh, from, from donor, donor funds. The next slide, which uh, just uh, unpack uh, some of these targets that uh, uh, we, we spoke about. Uh, the number of interventions have been implemented by uh, the National Department in support of local government, uh, particularly in implementing air quality man management functions. Uh, currently, uh, we are in the process of procuring services for development of air quality management plans. Uh, for example, for Tabo Mofuzanyana District Municipality, uh, and five municipalities were capacitated in the development of air quality management plans, and, and the list is there. 
We've supported three provinces in the development and revision of air quality management plans, and these are Limpopo, Northwest, and KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, we've also worked with nine district municipalities uh, that we've capacitated to mainstream climate change into their planning instruments. And there's a long list uh, ranging from Opani to um, uh, winelands in the West Coast. Um, and the last one, uh, we've supported four provinces to revise their climate uh, plans uh, to include uh, the mitigation uh, component. And these are uh, Limpopo, uh, Northwest, Northern Cape, and KwaZulu-Natal. And currently, we are, we are revising the plans for two other provinces. Uh, which is the Free State and in Pumalanga. And so that uh, it's a summary of our six uh, targets that we've lifted. And, and thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, we now on program five on biodiversity and uh, conservation. DDG Mahotla is going to take the committee through the details of this branch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... DJ, good morning to you, to Minister Chair, and also to colleagues. Program four, our mandate is to ensure the regulation and management of biodiversity, heritage, and conservation matters in a manner that facilitates sustainable economic growth and development. We have 13 targets. Um, the first output indicator is uh, the number of hectares of land added to the conservation estate per annum, and our target for 23-24 is 610,674 hectares. The second indicator relates to reporting on implementation of improvement plans for six management authorities produced. This relates to management effectiveness. And our target is to produce a status report on implementation of improvement plans for six management authorities. The third one relates to the number of interventions to ensure conservation of strategic water source areas and wetlands. And we are implementing two interventions. One is uh, to get one Ramses site designated and also the second one is the securing of three strategic water sources areas. In output re outcome related to mitigating the threats to biodiversity, our uh, indicator is a regulatory tool to ensure conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity developed and implemented. implemented. And our target is to uh, get approval for the additional assessment report on the linkages between migration, desertification, land degradation, and drought for implementation. The next one relates to the high level panel recommendations and interventions on biodiversity. And uh, the target uh, is uh, the first one is program of work for the white paper on conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity approved for implementation. And the second one relates to the revision of the national biodiversity economy strategy to be submitted to cabinet for approval uh, for public comments. The next uh, output indicator relates to the number of biodiversity economy initiatives implemented. And here we are targeting three initiatives. The first one is the creation of 800 jobs. And then the next one is the training of 400 uh, beneficiaries. And this is accredited training and the donation of 300 heads of game to previously disadvantaged individuals and communities. The next one is the number of benefit sharing agreements approved, and our target is to get five benefit sharing agreements approved. The last one relates to the indigenous forest sustainably managed and regulated. And here the indicator is the number of state indigenous forest managed units mapped, and that is five of them, and the number of uh, hectares in state forests rehabilitated rehabilitated, this uh, includes the clearing of alien invasive, and there's about 300 hectares. The next slide then relates to the work that we are doing uh, with the provinces and um, across the country on the white paper and the global biodiversity framework. We have established a reference group that will support the development and implementation of the white paper and the global biodiversity framework. And we are working with provinces for them to identify land and projects that will meet the 30 by 30 target for conservation 
sustainable and access use, and also to advance biodiversity sector transformation. Um, further to this, we are working with the Eastern Cape Provincial Government around the reimagining of the Wild Coast Conservation and Development Initiative, and also we're working on specific program with traditional leaders on transformation. In respect of the implementation of the high-level panel recommendation, the first program relates to the voluntary exit from captive bred lions. A ministerial test team has been established, and um, we have co-developed a database on captive bred facilities with the provinces and also established a support group made up of provinces and SALGA. We are also further working with the provinces in the development of the black and white rhino biodiversity management plans. Uh, which we hope to have the draft by end of the financial year. Next slide. This map then starts to show you the biodiversity economy interventions across the country and also how they relate to the poverty nodes uh, in the country. The dark shaded areas are the most uh, uh, poverty um, uh, related areas. And the projects, some of the projects that we are working on relates to the game donation and custodian support to previously disadvantaged individuals and community, the training and capacity building for SMMEs and communities, also the biodiversity economy infrastructure support uh, that we are doing in respect of wildlife economy and bioprospecting. And we are also working on the development of standards and certification scheme for communal, private, and state land to support the 30 by 30 global biodiversity framework targets, and also identification, facilitation, and recognition of an indigenous knowledge system for indigenous species, and the conceptualization and development of biodiversity beneficiation approaches. Then the last one relates to the work we are doing around the sustainable land management. Uh, this is a donor funded program and we are working with the provinces of Northern Cape and Limpopo. And also the other one is we are work, we have just concluded the biodiversity offset guidelines, which will be used um, in the evaluation of uh, development applications and ensure that there is land set aside um, uh, to benefit biodiversity and conservation. We are also implementing a number of uh, biodiversity management plans with provinces. This relates to the Roybos and Honeybush with the Eastern Cape, Pelagonium with Free State and Eastern Cape, and Pigas Gill Reed Frog with KZN. We are also working to uh, with sand parks. Leading this one is the establishment of the new Grassland National Park, and this is uh, working with Eastern Cape. Um, Parks and Tourism Agency and the Department of Economic Development, the same local municipality and the Joe Babi District Municipality, Elundini Local Municipality, NGO Partners, and the Batrawa Traditional Authority. And then the last one then relates to working on the uh, designation of two heritage, uh, facilitating the nomination of two heritage heritage uh, sites uh, for inscription by UNESCO. This is the emergence of modern humans, which is the Pleistocene uh, occupation sites of South Africa. This is a serial nomination with three component sites that are located in the Western Cape and KwaZulu Natal uh, provinces. So we are working with those respective provinces. And the sites demonstrate evidence of the evolution of modern human behavior and culture uh, between 167,000 and 38,000 years ago. The second one that we are working on is the human rights liberation struggle and reconciliation. We refer it briefly as the Nelson Mandela Legacy Site. It's a serial nomination with 10 components that are located in KwaZulu Natal, Free State, Halting, and Eastern Cape. And the Sites demonstrate the events and ideas and belief system that were at the core of the liberation struggle in South Africa. Further to this, we are also working with Amatole District Municipality and Eastern Cape Parks and Tourism Agency and the Eastern Cape Develop Department of Economic Development and Environmental Affairs for the possible designation of the Amatole Biosphere Reserve by UNESCO. And this uh, designation will promote sites conservation and sustainable development based on local community efforts and sound science in the area. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jefferson. Um, the program six is environmental program. 
uh, which is mainly responsible for expanded public works. Uh, Dr. Mkiza, DDG, uh, EP, is going to go through the details and take the committee through the targets that we have for 23-24. Thank you, DG. Good morning, Honorable Chair, members, Minister and Deputy Minister, DG and colleagues. The purpose of environmental programs is to implement and manage the implement, implementation of expanded public works programs and also green economy projects in the environment sector. Next slide, please. The branch has nine um, APP targets and the targets are aligned um, in terms of the different outcomes that we are pursuing. On the outcome on um, um, more decent jobs created, sustained with youth, women and persons with disabilities prioritized, we aim to create um, 35,477 um, as a department uh, full-time equivalents. And um, in terms of the number of work opportunities that the department will create um, through the implementation of expanded public works program projects, uh, the total is 71,035, um, comprising of 66,951 from the environmental programs branch and also a contribution from forestry of 4,084. Um, much like what the DG had highlighted in our employment uh, creation programs, uh, we prioritize the employment of women and the employment of youth and also 2% being allocated for persons with disabilities. On the outcome of ecosystems rehabilitated and managed, the branch um, will clear uh, 70,066 70, hectares. And the branch has also identified and prioritized the follow-up clearing of 532, 100 hectares. This follow-up clearing is mainly targeting areas that were previously cleared and is key in terms of us being able to maintain uh, the areas that we previously cleared, it, thereby protecting the investment of the department. The number of wetlands um, that will be rehabilitated in the uh, financial year is 115, and also the number of kilometers of coastline cleaned is 2,116 across, across the coastal provinces. Um, within the outcome of integrated fire management, um, the branch aims to uh, suppress 90% of all of wildfires. And under the outcome of infrastructure adaptation and disaster risk reduction, the branch will um, invest in uh, biodiversity infrastructure facilities, um, either constructing them or renovating them. And the total is 23, 10 being constructed and 13 being renovated. Under the number of overnight and staff accommodation units constructed or renovated, the total is 21 with 10 constructed and 11 renovated. In terms of clarifying what the work that we do with provinces, um, we would like to just highlight that the 71,035 work opportunities will be created across the nine provinces through EPWP projects. Uh, under ecosystems rehabilitated and managed, the clearing of invasive island species, both the initial and then the follow-up clearing will be done across the nine provinces. And the 115 wetlands that will be rehabilitated will be done in eight provinces, excluding Gauteng. The 2,116 kilometers of accessible coastline cleaned is limited to the coastal provinces of KZN, uh, Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, and Western Cape. On integrated fire management, the work will be done across nine provinces. On infrastructure adaptation and uh, disaster risk uh, reduction, this is related to the commitments that the department has across the provinces, highlighted in the slide being Limpopo, Northwest, Eastern Cape, KZN, Gauteng, and Northern Cape. On infrastructure facilities to be constructed or renovated, there the limit is in um, Eastern Cape, KZN, Free State, and Northern Cape. That is it, Chair. Thank you, Teacher. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, our next program is Chemicals and Waste Management. Uh, DDG uh, Mosekene is going to take the committee through the details of this program. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Good morning to Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, Honorable Minister, Honorable DM. Uh, program 7, um, the purpose is to manage chemicals and waste management policies in order to protect uh, the environment from the negative impacts of chemicals and waste. Um, with regard to the targets that we have set for 23-24, the first indicator relates to the branch finalizing the mercury regulations and publishing those for, for implementation uh, to ensure the protection of the environment. 
Uh, the second indicator relates to hydrochlorofluorocarbons consumption. Um, our target is to reduce the consumption by 50%, and this reduction assists us in protecting the ozone layer. Uh, the third indicator that we will be focusing on relates to the protection of the environment through regulations that we have put forward, uh, extended producer responsibility. Uh, we have added uh, three, uh, three waste streams uh, that relates to portable batteries, oils, and pesticides. So the aim this year is to ensure that we facilitate a process of um, getting concurrence on their fee uh, for to ensure that we are able to implement them. Um, in terms of the three waste streams that we have already started with the implementation of uh, waste diversion, uh, that is paper and packaging, electronic waste and lighting waste, 2023-24 uh, will be the second year of implementation and the tonnages have been uh, increased to align with the targets that we have set as shared on the screen. Also, the other priority waste stream that we will be working on, uh, it's the management of waste tires. We are also aiming to increase the volume of waste tires that are processed, uh, that covers both recycling, energy recovery, and also crumbing. We will also be aiming to publish for implementation the Section 29 Tire Industry Waste Management Plan. With regard to the work that we are doing to support uh, municipalities with regard to being able to effectively manage uh, environment, we are aiming to capacitate municipal councillors and officials with regard to, to waste management. Um, the, our target uh, there is to reach 300 of these councillors and or officials. We will also be running um, cleaning campaigns in 29 uh, municipalities. Just to indicate that um, with regard to um, provincial uh, work that we will be doing uh, on the provincial integrated waste management plans, um, Three out of the nine uh, of the provinces do have the plans. Uh, those three that do not have the plans are the ones at the bottom, Northern Cape Free State and KZN. Uh, in this year, we will be working with the provinces to, to support them to finalize their plans. And with regard to municipalities that we will be assisting with regard to finalizing their municipal integrated waste management plans, uh, Mopani District together with its local municipalities in the Northwest. Uh, we will be working with Moretele, Western Cape Central Karu, and um, in Houghton, we'll be working with Ekuruleni Metro in the Eastern Cape. We will be working with Sarah Bartman uh, together with its local municipalities, uh, as well as Raymond Mishab uh, municipality. Also working with uh, program six environmental programs, uh, all the districts um, in the country, uh, there are municipalities that have been prioritized and working in partnership with the department uh, with regard to cleaning, uh, and that also contributes to uh, uh, job creation. Uh, specifically in the Free State, uh, we are supporting uh, two municipalities, that is Mangaum and Machabeng with regard to landfill management and also supporting the operation of the buyback centers. We are also um, working with the provinces uh, with regard to supporting a number of um, enterprises that work uh, within the waste management, specifically recycling, and um, a number of uh, the enterprises, it's 32 in total across uh, most of the uh, provinces um, uh, that uh, we are working on different uh, waste streams, tires, plastics, construction and demolition waste, organic waste and electrical and electronic equipment. So those are 
those are part of the work that we are doing with the provinces. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, we have the next program, Forestry Management uh, and DDG Pumeza. Uh, Ms. Pumeza Nodada is going to take the members of the select committee through the details. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DJ. Good morning to the Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, uh, Minister, Deputy Minister, uh, and the colleagues. Uh, in terms of forestry, we are responsible for developing and uh, facilitating the implementation of policies that will ensure that there is sustainable management of forests uh, within the country. Then the next slide outlines the um, different uh, indicators that we have where we have two outcomes. The first one deals with the sustainable production of forests where we have uh, four indicators um, where we want to make sure that these plantations are brought back into production through uh, replanting uh, areas that we call temporarily unplanted areas. And our target there is 1,800 hectares for the current year. And then linked uh, to those uh, areas is ensuring that uh, we are able to maintain um, areas that have been planted through silvicultural practices, where there will be weeding, pruning, and copper uh, reduction uh, in the 2,100 hectares. And then um, we also manage uh, nurseries, and we are planning to have uh, three of those nurseries uh, refurbished. Um, and then in terms of the work we are doing through the master plan, um, we have a number of plantations that have been identified for transfer to communities, and we have eight of those plantations identified. And then the second outcome deals with um, the greening program, which looks at how we ensure that the threats on environmental quality and human health uh, is mitigated. In that regard, uh, we are planning uh, to make sure that there's uh, 150,000 uh, trees that are planted outside uh, the forest uh, footprint. Then in terms of the work that we are doing uh, in the provinces, um, as indicated, we are responsible for administering uh, two uh, legislation, which is the Forest Act and the Felt and Forest Fires Act. Um, and through these um, uh, two pieces of legislation, we are then responsible for managing 110,000 uh, hectares of plantation uh, in the uh, five provinces, that is the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, Limpopo, Malanga, and the Western Cape. And then uh, we are also responsible for managing seven uh, nurseries uh, in the different uh, provinces. And we implement the commercial forestry master plan, which brings together um, ourselves um, as the department and other government departments, um, the industry and labor, where we come together and then and, and look at how the sector can uh, or, or how this plan can contribute towards the growth uh, and investment uh, initiatives within the sector. And then lastly, we are responsible for the greening program, which is uh, the 10 million um, a, a tree a planting a program that we are doing over a five-year period with a target of uh, 2 million uh, trees on an annual basis with the support uh, of, um, of the stakeholders. Uh, in terms of the municipalities that um, we work with in terms of the greening program, we encourage them uh, in terms of uh, participating in the Upper City Awards, where we look at the work that they are doing in terms of their greening plans and how they involve youth, women and people with disability within uh, their greening uh, programs. So in terms of the implementation of these programs mentioned above, we then target uh, rural communities residing adjacent our operations or uh, adjacent to the plantations where they are offered short-term uh, employment uh, in activities such as the civic culture and the maintenance of the trees that uh, we have planted. And in the previous year, we have managed to create uh, over 3,000 jobs uh, working with the program, uh, environmental uh, programs. Then the next slide outlines uh, what we are planning for this current year, where we would like to 
ensure that through the planting of our plantations and also the planting of the trees, we are able to provide or offer those uh, short-term uh, employment uh, opportunities. Then in addition to this, through the Working on Fire program, um, we are supporting um, our plantations plus the communities in and around uh, these areas so that they can have aerial support for any threatening fires that may arise uh, during the year. And then in terms of the plantations that we are transferring, uh, the focus will be more on the Eastern Cape where we have a number of plantations that have been identified. And what we want to do is to enter into community forestry agreements with these communities and support them through advisory services and uh, extension services, and also training uh, in the areas where they would uh, require training. But also we, we are bringing in the industry in terms of the commitments that they have made uh, through the master plan uh, to ensure that there is investment in the sector. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, the program nine is the last program. Uh, I'm going to request the DDG, uh, uh, Ms. Sue Middleton, to take this commit the committee through program nine, um, which uh, also, uh, in terms of operation and targets, uh, operate as the uh, Marine uh, Living Resource uh, Fund. Uh, um, so that then she covers both uh, program nine and the marine because they they are both uh, all operating under program nine. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, Honorable Minister, DM, DG, and colleagues. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to just spend a few moments trying to explain the difference between Program 9 and the Marine Living Resources Fund and how they interact and how they are separate. Uh, but first, let's start with the mandate of the fisheries branch, which operates as Program 9 in the National Department of Forestry, Fisheries and Environment. And in terms of the mandate, the fisheries branch is responsible for managing the development, monitoring, and sustainable uses of marine living resources uh, to promote the integrity and quality of the marine ecosystem and to ensure the growth of the aquaculture sector. Now, as DG says, we operate both as Program 9 in the National Department, where we have um, eight targets for in our APP, which I'll go through um, shortly. And we also operate uh, as the Marine Living Resources Fund, where we have an additional three targets under the uh, MLRF. Uh, so the MLRF, the Marine Living Resources Fund, is a Schedule 3A public entity, um, which covers the operational activities of the fisheries branch. Um, but unlike other public entities, uh, the Marine Living Resources Fund does not have um, a board or a CEO. Uh, rather, the DG of the National Department functions as the accounting authority. And the fund also has no staff. Our salaries are paid by the National Department. Uh, we receive a grant from National Treasury via the department that covers three um, areas. Firstly, the vessel operating costs, which um, we use to fund our uh, patrol vessels, as well as our two research vessels. We also receive um, a grant uh, under the Working for Fisheries program, which is the EP equivalent. And we receive a small aquaculture grant um, from National Treasury. The rest, um, we generate our own revenue through the collection of levies and fees uh, from the fishing industry. Um, if we can go to the, um, the next slide. 
Um, these are our um, targets for the, the next financial year. The first one in terms of the aquaculture regu regulatory framework, we intend to submit the aquaculture development bill to parliament. Um, in terms of the national freshwater inland wild capture fisheries policy, um, we aim to implement 100% of the uh, action plan. And just to pause there for a moment on the inland fisheries policy, it is one of the questions that was raised by the um, researchers in their report. And the, um, we have to say that the uh, inland fisheries policy is a new mandate, a recent mandate that we um, got in about 2018. Uh, and as such, it's an unfunded mandate um, because the rest of the revenue that we generate comes from the, um, as the title says, from the marine sector. So um, this new mandate, we have approached National Treasury uh, for additional capacity, both financial and human in order to implement um, this mandate. Uh, in terms of uh, a well-managed uh, fisheries and aquaculture sector uh, that sustains and improves economic growth and development, we aim to conduct 5,500 inspections um, each year uh, in the six priority um, fisheries that have been identified, and those are hake, abalone, rock lobster, linefish, squid, and pelagics. Uh, we aim to conduct 290 verifications of right holders in the six priority fisheries. The next one is a target that is uh, uh, under the MLRF and not Program 9. Uh, we do report this one under Program 2 uh, of the uh, National Department, uh, but because we receive money separately um, from National Treasury for our vessels, we have to, as the Marine Living Resources Fund, um, account for these separately. And there we aim to conduct 40 joint operations with various um, enforcement partners mainly through um, Operation Pakisa, but not only through Operation Pakisa. The next deliverable is um, that we will be implementing four deliverables from the National Plan of Action on Sharks. Next slide. Um, we will be uh, developing a draft National West Coast Rock Lobster um, strategy We've uh, currently developed the anti-poaching strategy. Now we need to broaden that out uh, into a more comprehensive um, West Coast rock lobster strategy. Uh, we will be concluding the allocation of fishing rights uh, in the Western Cape to all declared small-scale um, fishing cooperatives. And we will be rolling out 100% of integrated development support programs uh, to small-scale cooperatives. And then the next two are MLRF um, targets, but we also do report into um, these targets for under the EP program, but because we get ring fence money for the Working for Fishes program, we must account for them separately. And there we will be um, creating 900 full-time equivalents and 1,500 work opportunities. Next slide. Uh, in terms of the projects that we have in the provinces, um, most of the projects are in the four coastal provinces because that's where we um, operate. Uh, and under the Working for Fisheries program, we will be creating 1,500 work opportunities and 900 full-time equivalents, mainly in the four coastal provinces. Uh, 40 uh, job opportunities in the Northern Cape, uh, 870 in the Western Cape, 340 in the Eastern Cape, 225 in KZN, and then 25 in the Free State. The Free State um, 
are the pro jobs that we create under the Kharip Aquaculture and Demonstration Center. Um, the reason why there are more jobs in the um, Western Cape is that most of those jobs are in the 12 proclaimed fishing harbors. And we only have proclaimed fishing harbors in the Western Cape and not in the other coastal provinces. Then in terms of the development support programs for the small scale fishing cooperatives, uh, these small scale fishing cooperatives will be supported through training, uh, capacity building, the development and infrastructure support programs, which are uh, in the four coastal provinces of Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, KwaZulu-Natal, um, and there we work in partnership with the municipalities, uh, NGOs, CBOs, and um, provinces. Then if I could ask you to go to skip uh, the next two slides, uh, and go, sorry, the next three slides, just quickly go to the financials. Um, this is just a high level um, overview of our um, financial allocations. And if you look at the 2023-24 financial year, we have a budget of um, 472.9 million. Um, distributed through um, the different programs. The main one is uh, administration, which includes the Marine Living Resources Fund. Um, then there's the Marine Resources Management, which is responsible for mainly for the permitting and the management of the fisheries, um, aquaculture and economic development, fisheries research and development, and then um, one of the big programs is our monitoring co compliance and surveillance program. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, the last part of our presentation is to take the committee on uh, the details of the budget uh, for the department, but also just to highlight, Chair, that we also have uh, included, even though we're not going to go through the detailed uh, presentation, we've included aspects of the strategic plan uh, where we uh, indicating on how we continuously aligning ourselves uh, to the strategic plan, um, uh, which is informing the APP. So I think if one were to present, it would be uh, repetitive. Um, we can go to slide 61 on the finances of the department. This is the last part, Shepherson and Honorable Members. Um, uh, this is the uh, it's, 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 it's budget for 23-24. I think the, the title slide in the previous slide was uh, had an error. It's 23-24. Um, as expected, we have a three-year budget, which is the 23-24 uh, uh, MTF. And I had indicated that uh, as a department for the year 23-24, uh, we have a total of 9.8 billion. Uh, and that uh, uh, reduces slightly uh, to 9.5 uh, billion. And then we then have in the outer year 9.7 billion. Just in the slide that uh, follows um, is an economic classification, slide 63, uh, economic classification of, the, of this budget, how it's categorized in terms of how much is going to your current expenditure, which is mainly your uh, payment of salaries, which is your compensation of employees, uh, also goods and services. And also looking at the transfers, transfers are very critical. Uh, and you would see uh, departmental agencies, the two 0.7 billion, that's the resources going to our various entities uh, in 23-24. Uh, and also um, uh, payment of capital uh, assets. And uh, also the last is uh, uh, payment of financial assets, which we do not have as a department. So this is the economic classification 
which we are expected to report on uh, as per guidance from National Treasury. The next slide, Chair, um, uh, outlines uh, resources from the department that will be transferred to the various entities. Um, um, and the entities are now going to be presenting uh, uh, Sun Parks, uh, Sunbi, uh, South African uh, Weather Services, Ismangaliso, and the Marine, Marine uh, Living Resource uh, Fund. Uh, they uh, get these transfers from the department uh, for them to carry out their mandate, but also generate their own revenue uh, uh, to fund uh, the operations and the mandates of the various uh, entities. And then the last slide, Chair, also, we felt it's critical also to highlight allocations for expanded public works uh, program where uh, our entities are very instrumental in ensuring that they have uh, various programs which focus on communities around the various parks uh, uh, in as far as uh, um, 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 EPWP is concerned, but also to a certain extent also looking into uh, where there's graduates uh, uh, in the scientific field, uh, the research areas, we also then transfer resources so that then the entities are in a position to implement those various programs. So that's what is entailed uh, in the slide. Uh, Honorable Chair and uh, members, this therefore brings us to the end of our presentation. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Minister and your DG and all the uh, DGs uh, that have uh, presented. Uh, let me welcome these uh, detailed and informative presentation. But uh, before I can give to the entities, I can see the time is half past 11 now. Let me hear from the honorable members, because uh, it means we'll be uh, left with only about one hour, 30 minutes. Let me check with the honorable members. Honorable members, we still have a presentation for five entities, although I requested them to summarize. So I just want to check with you whether they can continue or you ask your question, then after that, uh, the entities can come in. I need uh, your indulgence. Yes, Honorable uh, Lawaskafni. Chairperson, I would like to propose that we uh, raise our questions on the main uh, presentation as we've done, and maybe we can do a time allocation to that, uh, and then uh, for the, uh, the the rest of the entities to then present. That's my proposal. Otherwise, we're going to run out of, and like in the past, we will have to address all our questions in writing, and that's not effective. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable uh, Lavuskakni, Honorable Nguenya. Mama. Yes, Mama. Hey, network here is Chair, good morning, Chair. I would like to support uh, Honorable Lavuskakni. Okay. So, thank you very much, Honorable Members. Uh, DG and uh, um, Minister, what we'll do now, we are going to give members to ask questions, and then after that, we'll ask, um, ask uh, the CEOs from the entities, because we need that information from the entities to know what they are planning, what are they going to do, what are their challenges, how are they handle their challenges? So without wasting any time, honorable members, the platform is yours uh, to ask questions. I can see honorable Nguenya, honorable Davos Kahni, honorable uh, Bibi. 
those are the only three hands that I have for now. Oh, Usmawa to a guy whom I've seen only. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me mama matu, honorable mama tu mukause, yes. You can start, mama. Honorable Kathy, you can start. Thank you, Chairperson. <laughs> um, good morning to the Minister and the Department, and thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have quite a lot of questions to ask, but I'm trying to quickly summarize or go through them and then uh, maybe if there's some time I can come back chair to some others. I will start according to the programs with program one. My first question is um, uh, the human resources shortages and the lack of training was previously uh, uh, some of the reasons that uh, the department had a uh, uh, um, qualified opinion in the past. Uh, there are some reductions in some of these sub-programs, as it is at the moment, uh, with some of these functions in it. And I just want to know how will the department manage the budget the reductions uh, this year to ensure that that uh, qualified ordinance audit opinion will not reoccur. Then in program two, uh, I would like to know the compliance to landfill sites uh, is one of the reasons that, that, or I assume, and I would like to know if I'm right, uh, that the non-compliance to many of the landfill sites uh, is costs for municipalities part of, of the problem. And then about the uh, environmental um, environment authorizations, um, how many environmental authorizations is valid at the moment? So what is the baseline for the department? And then I also would like to know, does that include the authorizations on the mining oil and gas? Um, and another question on that is the 720 officials that's going to be trained in environmental compliance and enforcement, will they be officiated as part of the green scorpions or will they are they part of other sectors or other departments? Um, then in oceans and coasts, coast, I would like to know um, the reason for the reduction in the sub-program integrated coastal management and coastal conservation. I also picked up in the IPPs that you said that provincial park agencies will be re re requested to manage marine protected areas, which is um, a great idea, but I would like to know this reduction. Will the burden of cost then be on the provinces or on those agencies or shared between them? Um, then, um, also, you know, the, clean, the whole story of clean water and sewage discharge in oceans and all that. And I know that your department is not, um, are, are not the people authorizing uh, the sewage plants and things of local municipalities. But I would like to know uh, what is, what, how will, um, uh, what role is your department playing in trying to help to manage the economic and uh, the health and ecological impact of, of uh, sewage um, going into the ocean. Um, and the decrease in the budget, uh, what would be the impact on the water quality monitoring, monitoring programs and specifically on sector monitoring and the evaluation uh, over the medium term? Then on climate change, um, uh, we all know, based on you know the tragic uh, floods and things in KZN and some other areas, that functional early warning systems are effective communications and effective communication are critical parts of the climate change adapt, uh, adaptation strategy. 
How is the department going to ensure the rollout of these systems in informal areas as well as uh, rural areas? I know that uh, a lot of training has been done with district municipalities on adaptation strategies, but with the uh, with the um, with the fact that no disaster management plan exists in eight of the provinces in our country, so uh, does the department play a role in in trying to see that uh, disaster management plans are in place? Uh, uh, in province. Um, and I would like to know um, um, the draft, are there any draft sectoral emission targets uh, to be published yes, this year? And if it will be for which, se which sectors will be focused on? Uh, chairperson, um, uh, uh, on securing securing strategic water so, uh, sources, uh, you know, uh, you're talking referring to Ramsar sites. Uh, there was a reference to ref, uh, Ramsar site in 2023, 2022, 23, and now again, I would like to know to uh, how long does it take a department to sort of secure a Ramsar site, and uh, what what uh, where is this specifically going to be? And then with a focus on wetlands, uh, this is also an area in, in a lot of provinces that increasingly are being targeted by informal settlements. Uh, how is the department involved to address environmentally sensitive parts of the ecosystems being occupied by informal settlements um, um, in, in the various provinces? Uh, and then I just want to know what is the total area of state forest to be rehabilitated and what criteria uh, did, be, uh, did you use to determine this year's um, uh, uh, um, target? Um, what, is, what are the reasons for the Green Fund uh, uh, to be removed? Um, and then on the cleaning of invasive species, um, when the, the hectares are, that has been cleaned, um, is there a maintenance plan and uh, for them to be kept clean? And uh, the cost uh, and the responsibility of that, where does it fall? Does it lie with the national department? Does it fall to the provinces and all local authorities? Um, um, yeah. On chemical waste, what uh, the one of the main focuses that we all know for the reasons that municipalities struggle uh, to to keep uh, uh, you know with waste plans are the costs and the and the skills and I know that the department does play a role in that but um, uh, is there anything that the department can do more to make it more effective uh, then. Uh, Forestry. Um, I would like to know uh, the the twenty four communities that's going to receive, uh, you know, plantations is going to be uh, uh, transferred to them. Uh, how did the department or is the department clear? And are they um, confident that these uh, communities have the necessary resources and knowledge? to manage uh, these plantations effectively and sustainably. Um, and then on that as well, is there a reliable monitoring system within the department to make sure that uh, uh, to monitor post-settlement support to the forestries? And the same thing actually is applicable to the um, small-scale fisheries um, uh, rights. And then um, I would like to know on fisheries, how many small scale fishing, fishing cooperatives has been declared in Western Cape. Um, and Chairperson, before you're going to stop me, because I know I've asked a lot of questions, I would like on the <laughs> like to know on the aquaculture development bill, uh, with all due respect, I'm hearing about this, I'm eight years in this portfolio. And this is the, the, the eighth year that I'm hearing about the 
Pop Culture Development Bill. What is the time frame? Because it said that it's going to be submitted to Parliament. Uh, I'm afraid that that might should be a seven, Section 76 bill. And given the time frame for this important bill to go through the process of Parliament before the end of this term, I am a little bit skeptical about that. Um, um, I think I will I will stop here, Chair, and give and yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Katie Lawaskarni, uh, uh, Honorable Mama. Which mama? There are two mamas. Honorable <laughs> Mwanya, <laughs> 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 because when I, your network is uh, on and off, you. Mama Okay. Honorable Mwanya, and then the person who's uh, Mr. <laughs> Okay, let me dance chair chair. Wait, wait, can you wait. hear me? Yes, Mr. Savello, can you, you mute your mic, please? Okay, Mama, continue. Thanks very much, a chair, and good morning to everyone. Uh, thanks you, Chair, again for recognizing me. Let me start to appreciate the department for aligning its APPs and target to the seven national uh, policy priorities of the government. According to the presentation, the department has implemented out of the national priorities. As a committee chair, we measure the performance of the department on the basis of the implementation of the government priorities, NDP and other roadmap of the government. Honorable Chair, I will make a recommendation to the committee that the department has done well in the sixth administration. Hence far and as a result, it must be appreciated for the good work is has done a, Hence far, Honorable Chair, after reading the presentation and listening to the input of the political leadership of the department, I have the following question to ask Chairperson. Question one, I want to check that is it the program for which is climate change, air quality and sustainable development. The question is, what are the specific programs which will be supported by the donation of the US $80 million, which has been raised and planned as the target for the year 2023 and 2024? Question two, Chair. I want to check on the program seven, which is the chemicals and waste management. What are the targets and plans for the department to build an alternative land fill site in Houting for the current financial year? I ask this question because the land field sites are filling up very quickly in, in Houting and we need to do something. Um, under program seven, again, to train off local government sphere in waste management. I wanted to check the training which is offered to the councillors and officials by the department, whether it is based on needs of the municipalities or not. Do you have any forum of waste management in the municipality and provinces? And if yes, who is part of those forums and how often those forums meet? Do you meet a quarterly or monthly basis? Lastly, Chair, uh, in the program one, I want to check which is administration and how will the department prioritize the filling 
of the vacant post in cover functions of the senior management? And how many of the vacant posts have been filled in the last quarter of the many are planned to fill the, in the current quarter? Can the department provide the time frame? Honorable Chairperson, this is my input to the meeting, and I would like to end it here. Thank you very much, Mama. Okay. Now, call Honorable Mam Kauze. Oh, I'm next, Mama. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Oh, Mama. Thank you, Chair. So, Let me. Mam Kauze, continue. Mam Kauze, Mama, you'll be the last. Chairperson, thank you very much. And uh, I didn't mention at the beginning of this meeting that. I will have to leave the meeting at 12 to join the joint um, rules committee chair. My apologies. Um, chairperson, also, I will um, request that I speak with my video off. I'm in the remote areas of Free State. Um, chair, just a quick two questions to the department that. Um, the communities who have always relied on the sea as a source of their livelihoods, how is the department going to accommodate them? Um, have they been awarded rights through the fishing rights application process uh, or the small scale process? Um, my last point, Chair, how will this department ensure that aquaculture stats starts uh, playing a more meaningful role in addressing issues around poverty alleviation and job creation? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Mamam Kause. You can join your joint meeting. Uh, Honorable Mama. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chairperson. <laughs> Greetings to the Minister <laughs> and also the Deputy and, and also officials. Um, my apologies, Mama, that I didn't mention that uh, I would like to be uh, excused at 12 o'clock because I'm part of the Joint uh, Rules Committee. Oh, you'll pardon okay. me for that. I've only got three questions, Mama. <laughs> uh, my first question uh, is on program three. <clears throat> Under the coast in provinces, uh, the Minister, to what extent has the, uh, has the impact of floods in case that and, and sewer infrastructure uh, affected the water quality motoring program, especially in Etegwini. <clears throat> My second question, Chairperson, will be uh, on the program two, uh, regulatory compliance and sector monitoring. Uh, I have noticed that uh, this program has been allocated um, the lower budget for the year 2023 and also 2024. Now, uh, Minister, what informed this lower allocation? Uh, is it based on the fact that the department has not finalized the compliance and enforcement strategy? If yes, what is the time frame? to finalize the compliance and enforcement strategy? If no, what are the reasons? Can we get the detailed answer? Chairperson, my last question will be the last question uh, is on air quality compliance. Chairperson, do we have any uh, notifications which have issued to any of the power stations uh, in terms of uh, air compliance? If yes, which are those 
power stations. I'm sorry, Chaperson, I've got a terrible flu. What about that? Thanks, Mama. That's the end. <coughs> sorry, Mama. Take care of yourself. Okay, uh, thanks. Now I'll give back to the Minister and Deputy Minister and DG. Minister or Deputy? Minister? Jefferson, um, I'm not quite Sorry. sure if he's online. Okay. Sorry, uh, my, my, my apologies. Um, the place where I am, there's some maintenance being done. It's very noisy. I don't have anything to add at this stage, Chair. DM. Deputy Minister, do you have anything to add? Yes, okay. I can hear you, Chairperson. I can hear you, Chairperson. No, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, we, 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 I don't have anything to, to add. I'm happy with the responses uh, from the um, members. Thank you very much. Um, DG. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, thank you to the honorable members uh, for their uh, inputs and also the clarity uh, questions which they have posed. I am going to request uh, the uh, various DDGs to respond to the details of the questions that were asked. Uh, I think uh, Honorable Labaskakni asked uh, quite a number of questions. But I just want to make a general comment, uh, Cheverson, uh, in relation to our budget. I think there is an area where Honorable Labaskakni has highlighted that uh, uh, the, the budget um, is reducing uh, in the following year uh, for some of the programs. I wanted to highlight that um, the major contributor of our budget uh, to be 9.8 billion in the year 23-24 is that we have received resources of about 700 million, uh, uh, which is mainly in relation to infrastructure, uh, which then we have allocated to various entities, which includes uh, SOARS and sand parks. And that allocation is a once-off allocation. So that's why then you will see a dip when it gets to the following year, uh, given that the amount was just for, 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 for one year. Also, Chair, what also uh, has been raised, uh, and I think the CFO is going to respond to that, is the issues of uh, our capacity uh, in the department uh, in terms of us being in a position to address all the issues that have been raised in as far as the qualified audit is concerned, uh, and uh, uh, also the filling of positions um, and the rate at which those positions would need to be filled. I'm going to request just uh, going down the programs, Jefferson, so that they can provide uh, detailed responses. Uh, we'll then come back if there's any other matters that uh, would require an overall response. Uh, Chair, thank you very much. Um, CFO, can we can you respond to your issues? Thank you. Thank you, DJ, and thank you to the honorable members for the questions. I think there was a question from Honorable Paskasli regarding the um, attainment of the unqualified audit opinion versus the budget that, that is decreasing. What has been a challenge for the department was that in the past, we used to conclude the audit late around December, which then gives the department little time to implement the audit action plan. So in the last financial year, 2021-22 uh, financial year, we concluded the audit on time. Thank you. Um, in the 2021-22 in the financial year, we concluded the audit on time. 
which then gave the department an opportunity to develop an audit action plan that was uh, monitored throughout the financial year. And we have managed to implement most of the recommendations that were raised by the Auditor General. So that's why we are saying we are striving to ensure that we achieve the unqualified audit opinion. So mainly the main reason was the late conclusion of the audit, which gave limited time for the implementation. Then I think the DG has responded to the issues of the, of the budget de decrease. And also there was a question that was asked on program two as to why is the budget reducing as well. The main reason for that is the, with the establishment of the border management agency, some of the resources have moved from program two to that agency and therefore they moved with the budget. So mainly those um, are the areas why there has been a reduction in that regard. I think those were the questions that were directed to me. Thank you so much, honorable members. Thank you, honorable chair. Uh, can I allow the DDG CMS to deal with the issues of vacancies and the rate at which we are going to ensure that we fast track filling in of this position. Thanks, um, DG and um, Honorable Chair. In terms of vacancies of the 291 vacancies that which exist in the past quarter, we already advertised 95 posts of those to date, um, 35 have been filled and the others are in different stages of um, being concluded. We have also um, intended on advertising 60 posts in the first quarter. And on a quarterly basis, we then continue to fill the post. But from an SMS point of view, we had 45 vacancies out of the 45, 29 were advertised and 16 of those um, were already have already been filled and with the remainder being at different um, stages. So we have targets um, on a quarterly basis that which we prioritize. And in terms of the capacity within the CFO's office to deal with aspects of um, unqualified audit, this has been prioritized as a um, critical post that which um, the department needs to fill as a matter of a uh, priority. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, with your permission, I'm going to request uh, uh, Ms. Benderman to respond to issues of compliance and also uh, issues of uh, environmental authorizations. Thank you, DG. Thank you, honorable members. Um, I'm going to start with a question regarding the budget. Uh, CFO has correctly indicated that the Border Management Agency has taken over uh, that particular function, which also resulted in a decrease in our budget. But I will also indicate that the compliance and enforcement strategy, as Honorable Member has raised, is something that we also want to finalize uh, to ensure that we can properly capacitate um, not only nationally, but ensure that this is communicated provincially as well, but also to look at the resources that are required for the compliance and enforcement. So that strategy, which we have planned in this uh, financial year to finalize, will guide that in terms of the resources, uh, if any uh, additional that we would require. Because there are budgetary constraints that are experienced at national, provincial, and municipal level. And uh, so we are looking at the, the strategy to guide how these threats can be addressed by the EMIs, uh, but notwithstanding the current human and financial constraints, we are still working cooperatively with provincial and with municipal EMIs to ensure that we support each other in taking the work forward. So there are a lot of planning in terms of the activities uh, that are undertaken and coordinated to ensure that despite the limitation in the resources, that we can work smarter to ensure that we are able to meet our compliance and enforcement targets. Um, with regard to the question on the non-compliance of landfill sites and whether this is as a result of the municipality uh, budget constraints, 
Uh, I do believe that is an issue. It is a budgetary and infrastructure, which is something uh, the branch chemicals and waste also looks at in terms of how we can possibly support and assist uh, the municipalities. Uh, unfortunately, from a compliance and enforcement perspective, when we come in there, we take enforcement action if they are non-compliant. Uh, our other branches look at how we can assist, but we do as compliance and enforcement, as indicated, look at uh, training uh, to try and improve the, uh, the compliance in these particular municipal landfill sites. Uh, on the EAs, um, on how many uh, EAs are valid, um, I mean, over the years, we have, uh, it's preceding 26 years that uh, we have a number of environmental authorizations. Our system captures uh, national and provincial environmental authorizations. I don't have the exact figure, it is thousands, but I can provide it in writing. Um, in terms of the, the EAs, uh, mining, oil and gas activities uh, that, that was raised, we cover uh, gas, uh, even though it's to a limited extent. Mining and oil is the mandate of DMRE, so those environmental authorizations are not included in the authorizations. Um, on the issue of the training and um, whether the, the training that uh, we carry out leads to designation. So a large percentage of the training program is directed uh, towards providing basic and specialized training to EMIs, which are the green scorpions, while the rest of the attendees are from regulatory authorities that work in conjunction with the EMIs to combat environmental crimes. So these would include your SARS, your Customs and the Border Management Authority as well. Uh, so those are part of the, uh, the training. I'm trying to check if I have addressed all of the issues that were raised. Uh, Chair, I, I think those are all for now. Thank you, DG. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Chaperson. Um, can I request uh, DDG Kekan to respond? Oh, sorry, let me start with Oceans and Coasts, uh, Dr. Figizolo, uh, around the MPAs and also uh, issues, I think, uh, with regards to, I think there was a matter on Oceans and Coasts. Um, uh, yeah, I think the main one was around the MPAs. Uh, over to you, Dr. Figuzo. Thank you, DG, and uh, thank you once again to the Honorable Chair and uh, Honorable Labuskahne. When it comes to MPAs, uh, after they are declared, of course, uh, then um, a management, management plans should be developed, and um, then uh, those management plans are then submitted to the Minister for approval. And um, and then uh, if we're talking about the development of management plans, we do so with uh, and together with uh, the, the the management authorities, which is uh, the um, 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 for example, the as developers or Natal Wildlife as 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 explained during my presentation. So so um, that is their involvement, and then the implementation thereof. Of, of those because the department at the moment does not have capacity to do that kind of, of implementation. But in terms of monitoring the effectiveness of, of, those, uh, of those MPAs, that is done jointly utilizing the platform of an advisory committee. So funding, which was raised by the Honorable um, Labuskahne, uh, I would say constraints come in when we are developing uh, management plans uh, themselves. Uh, because they require that uh, stipulated period of 12 months and uh, with various uh, stages. And then that then requires um, additional funding. But thus far, we've been able to get that kind of funding from a regional body and, uh, and, then, and then NGO. So we are progressing quite well uh, in, in that regard in as far as the development of those marine protected areas as we have done so in the previous financial year and the one before it particularly for the Operation Pakisa Marine Protected Areas. And um, then there was a, a, a question on water quality, which was in twofold. Uh, one was on uh, pollution that arises out of uh, 
the operation of uh, uh, discharge points, that is um, uh, sewage plants. And the Honorable Labuskakhne is, 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 is correct uh, uh, to say that um, the development or the design of those and the operation of those is by municipalities, not necessarily the department. But where we come in is uh, the monitoring of their functioning, which we are doing it in, 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 in two ways. There is the end of the pipe monitoring, uh, which we are looking at the quality of what is, um, what is discharged into the environment. And uh, as it is now, we are doing the preliminary um, 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 treatment in our treatment plants, which uh, has got different sizes, but particularly if we can mention five millimeters, um, that uh, it must be anything that we discharge into the environment should not be more than uh, five millimeters in, 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 in diameter. That we do by getting from the, the municipalities themselves um, monthly reports, which then according to the permit that they get uh, from us is that they need to do that monitoring every week. So those weekly reports, then they are compiled into a monthly report, which is then given to us so that we can be able to monitor whether they are uh, compliant to, to, to the permit conditions. The, the, the other manner with which we deal with, with, with um, um, uh, the discharge points is uh, we request them uh, to do dispersion model modeling before or the, the, the permit is, 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 is issued to them. And the reason why we do that is to look at how far from the discharge point and the nature of dispersion. And, and so that we can be able to look at how we can um, manage the, 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 the process, looking into the, the permit itself and what needs to be adjusted in accordance to the to, to the permit that would be issued to them, so 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 that uh, will also inform uh, the impact assessment. Uh, that is the marine in environment impact assessment. That is what kind of impact is the, the 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 discharge doing into into the environment? Those we do on an annual basis. So I can safely say the department is is on top of that, but. Uh, or uh, um, about the recent um, floods in KZN, uh, as, 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 as Honorable Webe has uh, indicated, uh, that kind of created some problems in terms of access to some of the areas which uh, all uh, stakeholders concerned are really attending to. And uh, then the, the third one was uh, water quality um, um, monitoring as well. And uh, I would like to, and the concerns uh, around the budget um, that, that is allocated to that. It is not with the integrated coastal management. Um, it is with the specialist monitoring services. And the specialist monitoring services is working together with a university in the Eastern Cape, which is the Walter Sulu University, where there is the National Pollution Laboratory with five areas um, of, of operation within the laboratory, chemistry, uh, uh, um, microbiology, and so on. So what, what happens is that uh, within the laboratory itself, there are those laboratory services where the analysts are, where previously disadvantaged individuals with good qualifications ranging from masters and PhDs in various fields are the analysts in the laboratory. And then within the department, there are about 34 young people who were employed to collect samples across the, 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 the provinces um, at, at, at uh, 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 certain periods that would have been uh, 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 agreed upon um, between the department and the university. And then we get those monthly reports and then we get those quarterly reports on, on, on what is happening with our, with our waters. And then the intention is to take it to sediments as well as um, uh, tissue samples. I will stop there for now. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, uh, can I request that uh, DDG Kekan uh, respond to the climate change issues together with air quality uh, issues? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, DG. Uh, let me start with a question on uh, um, uh, compliance. And, and just to indicate that uh, 
um, uh, these power stations are issued uh, atmos atmospheric emission licenses by district municipalities. And uh, they, there is a pending compliance case uh, on Kendall at the moment. Uh, and this is uh, handled by Ngangala district municipality. So uh, just to answer the question, in short, there's one that we are aware and it's handled by that district municipality. And on the second question of the, um, the, the donor funding, uh, how many sectoral emission targets uh, uh, would be would be issued uh, this uh, uh, year? Uh, what what we are saying is that it's seven. Uh, just to answer that question in brief, it's seven, and this uh, is for the energy sector, and this is for transport, uh, the DTIC, uh, agriculture, human settlement, water and sanitation and the, the waste for DFFE. So seven, seven, seven in total. And the last question, uh, DG, that was, uh, that was raised um, uh, relate to uh, the issue of uh, uh, disaster uh, management. Uh, so the department is working uh, uh, closely with the South African Weather Services uh, in this regard, uh, in implementing what we call the framework for climate services. Uh, uh, which uh, the, and this uh, uh, framework uh, on climate services uh, it promote the rollout among other things the early warning system in in the areas that were that were mentioned. Uh, source uh, is mandated to provide weather information, and they are disseminating early warning through uh, the media, for example, uh, and television as well as uh, uh, community radio stations specifically. Uh, for the areas that are going to be uh, affected. And through these uh, radio stations, uh, they are able to reach even the rural communities as well as informal communities. So that is uh, how um, the department and, and source uh, try to disseminate as much information as possible so that it can reach uh, the intended recipient. And I think those were uh, all the questions that were asked uh, on climate change, DG. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, DDG. Honorable Chair, we are now moving to uh, program five, biodiversity uh, and conservation. DDG Mkhotla will respond to those issues. Good. Good morning, DG. I didn't specifically pick up uh, issues related to B and C from the members. If you can just direct me. I thought there was a matter uh, in relation to B and C, or maybe I would have, uh, uh, maybe let's pass uh, this area. I'll come back to it. Uh, we can move to climate, uh, no, sorry, chemicals and waste management, uh, DDG. Uh, I think I didn't hear from EP. We, we are with waste now. Thanks. Thank you, DG. Um, the question raised by Honorable Labuskakhne in terms of what more are we doing to support waste management, um, especially given the implications to municipalities. Um, we have in 2020 introduced extended producer responsibility uh, uh, regulations uh, for the three waste streams, which are currently under implementation, paper and packaging, electrical and electronic equipment, as well as lighting. So with these schemes, um, we've seen that uh, producers of these products have organized themselves um, and put in uh, the relevant uh, financial resources to support the collection of uh, these products at the end of life and also support the further recycling. This also helps to alleviate the burden uh, on municipalities with regard to some of the management aspects of, of this waste We've also worked with uh, National Treasury um, together.
together with um, COCTA to, to review, especially um, as it affects the division of revenue uh, with regard to specific grants to, to ease um, the financial uh, constraints that municipalities are facing, especially the municipal infrastructure grant uh, that covers all, all the municipalities and also for, for metros, um, the urban settlement development grants, uh, such that uh, these grants, the, the municipalities are able to use them for uh, procuring a fleet, given that uh, uh, waste is heavily reliant on logistics with regard to um, collection of, of waste. Um, Honorable um, Gwenya also asked about um, alternative uh, waste treatment, especially in, in, in Gauteng. So, so we've worked with the infrastructure South Africa in order to ensure that we have a programmatic approach to um, um, fund uh, waste infrastructure. Uh, this approach um, looks at prioritizing uh, compliance and also ensuring that um, we are able to secure a commercial viability of this alternative waste treatment. Uh, generally, uh, some of the uh, tariffs, uh, waste management tariffs of municipalities are not reflective of the costs that are required uh, to enable a sufficient investment into alternative waste treatment. So we, we need to be working uh, with uh, municipalities to correct uh, this um, tariffs, but also we need to be able to attract uh, co-funding uh, from, from private sector, as well as um, uh, development finance institutions to for, for, for municipalities to be able to afford uh, this alternative waste treatment because uh, it is uh, costly. Honorable Nguenya also asked about the training, um, whether it is um, needs driven. Um, yes, um, uh, usually at the beginning of each financial year, we do reach out um, and uh, conduct needs analysis, um, given that um, the, there is also a high turnover of staff in municipalities, and it focuses on areas uh, such as um, waste management plans, um, the bylaws, and, 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 and diversion of, of waste from landfill, um, all those aspects um, that municipalities indicate in their needs are part of um, this um, tailored training. The other question related to uh, whether we have forums at municipal level for waste management. Uh, yes, um, we do have district forums uh, which are aligned to uh, the district municipalities wherein um, the designated waste management officers from the respective local municipalities are meant to participate. Uh, and these uh, structures are meant to sit uh, quarterly and um, they also um, report to the provincial uh, waste management forum, which is led by the provincial waste management officer and it cascades up to the national um, Working Group Eight, which is a MinTech structure, with which also reports to to MinNEC on a quarterly basis. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, I think we just left the two programs. Uh, we're recognizing the time. I'm going to request Forestry to respond around the state forest issues. Uh, um, uh, Chair, thank you. Uh, thank you, um, DJ. Uh, in terms of the question on the on whether um, we are confident that the communities that we are transferring the plantations to have um, necessary resources and knowledge, 
uh, what we do is that through the two chief directorates, the one that is responsible for forestry development and the other one that is responsible for forest land management and coast settlement support, uh, we assist the communities uh, to develop uh, the management plans uh, where we are able to identify what is required for those plantations to be, uh, um, for them to be sustainably managed. Linked to that is uh, through the collaboration with industry in the master plan uh, to get the industry to support uh, these, these um, uh, communities uh, in terms of uh, technical advice and funding uh, when necessary uh, to make sure that there is that uh, a sustainable management of the of, of, of the plantations. What we also do is that we work very closely with the um, uh, the CETA that is responsible for forestry and uh, manufacturing, where we are able to identify the skills that are required and through the, the funding that we receive from the CETA, then these uh, uh, communities do get the training for them to be able to manage um, the plantations. And then in terms of how we uh, 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 monitor um, the post-settlement uh, support, uh, through chapter two of the National Forest Act, we have what we call uh, principles, uh, criteria, indicators, and standards that were uh, developed a few years ago. And we're using those standards uh, in terms of measuring whether uh, the plantations are are sustainably managed. And what we do is that through those uh, 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 criteria and standards, we, 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 we develop the management plans based on those so that when we do the monitoring on an annual basis, we are able to identify whether there is progress in terms of sustainability or there is a decline. And if there's a decline, what kind of support would then be required? So as we do the, the, the transfer of the plantations and with the restructuring that has been done within the branch to ensure that there is support uh, to these communities, that is one of the strategies we use to ensure that uh, there is better uh, uh, production uh, in the plantations um, that have been identified. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Jefferson. Um, can I request, uh, Didi Jisu to respond to the aquaculture issues and also the uh, fisheries and small scale uh, uh, matters. Thank you. Thank you, DG, um, Honorable Chair, once again. Uh, so uh, Honorable Labaskahne um, asked two questions. The first was on how many uh, small scale fishing cooperatives have been uh, established in the Western Cape. And the answer to that is none at the moment. Uh, in terms of the process, what has happened is that the uh, successful list of small scale fishers have been um, published. And the next step is the appeals process. And the appeals process uh, uh, time period for submitting of appeals uh, is this Friday, the 28th of um, April. Thereafter, um, the ministers, the appeals authority will consider the appeals. Uh, parallel to the appeals process being finalized, we then start the process of setting up the small scale cooperatives. But the prior step is first to recognize small scale fishing communities. Uh, that's a fairly quick step um, where we anticipate that we will uh, recognize about 80 fish small scale fishing communities in the Western Cape. And from there, we will um, register cooperatives um, between now and October. And we estimate based on the number of successful applicants that we will be establishing about 60, 60 um, small scale cooperatives in the Western Cape. Uh, so that is still a work in, in progress. Uh, Honorable Labuskakni also asked uh, about the aquaculture bill. And yes, it has taken uh, quite a while um, to, to process. 
in terms of the background and the history, the Aquaculture Bill was introduced to Parliament during the fifth administration, but could not be completed. Uh, and therefore, it were, had to be revived during the sixth administration. But based on requests from the industry themselves for a further round of consultation on the Aquaculture Bill, a minister agreed that we pull the bill for extensive public consultations, which have now been concluded. Where we are with the bill is that uh, the bill is currently with the Office of the State Law Advisor for certification. Uh, we expect certification within the next two weeks, and thereafter it will be introduced um, to, to Parliament uh, via the, the Cabinet um, process. So we're still optimistic um, that it will be introduced um, during your term of, of office, um, Honourable Member. And then um, Honourable Mabatu asked um, two questions. The first one was on um, whether we believe as the fisheries branch that we were, were, able, were able to cater and accommodate um, small coastal um, communities during the um, FRAP and the small-scale fishing um, process? And our answer is, yes, we believe that we um, were able to com accommodate um, those that uh, were worthy of being allocated fishing rights during the FRAP process. Uh, and in particular, those small uh, uh, coastal communities would have been accommodated through the um, allocations in the West Coast rock lobster fishery, which took place during 2015-16, um, particularly in the near shore um, sector, as well as the last round of allocations in 2021, um, where they would have been accommodated in the traditional line fish um, fishery. And as we've mentioned, um, small scale uh, fishes are going to be part of um, and will be allocated a basket of species through the small scale fishery. Um, and then the last question was regarding um, how conf confident are we about rolling out um, aquaculture and um, projects to accommodate and deal with poverty alleviation and job creation. And um, honorable members, I think we need to be realistic in relation to what um, the aquaculture sector can accommodate. By its nature, um, aquaculture projects in South Africa tend to be very capital intensive, very expensive, um, and are not big job creators. Uh, rather, the um, aquaculture sector can be looked at uh, to augment de uh, decreasing and declining fish stocks and to um, assist with providing food nutrition and food security. But I think at this stage, it's not realistic to expect the aquaculture sector to be a huge job creator. Thank you. Uh, leave it there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I think we have covered most of the questions. I'm going to request in the interest of time, uh, that's the question around the Ramsar sites uh, and uh, the strategic water sources on how then we identify those areas uh, which we have uh, outlined for the year. Uh, that we respond in writing together with the maintenance plan. I think uh, Honorable Lavaskahni wanted to get a sense whether we have a, a maintenance plan on clearing invasive plant species. We will, res I'm requesting Chair, we respond in writing uh, together with other questions raised in your analysis in the interest of time. Otherwise, I think that's all from our side. Uh, thank you, Deputy Minister and Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr.
We're struggling to hear you, Chairperson. Chairperson, oh, we're struggling um, to hear you. Oh, okay. We can't hear you, Mary. Turn off your video. Not really, Che. Yes. We can't hear you at all, Che. Um, <clears throat> was some, uh, just nice and we can't hear you, Chair. Honorable Giva, can you close the meeting? Continue the meeting and close. Uh, this is very awkward now. Um, I am not sure how many of the members are still on the platform. We are still here, Honorable Labaskakni. Does the does the Honorable Chair want to close the meeting? Thank you, Minister. I. Uh, <laughs> I, I also, I think nobody could hear her. And I just wonder if there's any sense in continuing the meeting. Hello. Uh, we can't hear you, Chair. We can't hear you, Chair. I'm here. Honorable Madisi, Honorable Chair, uh, do you want to close the meeting? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, um, Honorable Minister, I called the chair and uh, I asked her, and it's it, she indicated that she would like me to thank the minister for being here and the department for the presentation and the answering of the questions. And if there's anything that you would like to say um, as a closure minister, you can do so. Otherwise, we are going to um, close the meeting because uh, it's very difficult to continue with some of the members that had to attend another meeting and uh, the problem with the sound. So, Minister, if there's anything that you want to say in closure, you are more than welcome. Thank you. 
Thanks very much, Honorable Labuskakni. I think we just need guidance to our entities. Can we agree with the committee that um, we have deposited the presentations with yourselves? And if you send us questions, we will respond in writing on the entities as we haven't had time to present the entity presentations. Thank you very much for that, Minister. I, yes, I, I think we would all agree, but because we received all the presentations, uh, and we would be, uh, and thank you for the entities doing the, uh, making the effort to be here this morning, and our profound apology that we didn't give you the time to present. Uh, it's always a little bit difficult uh, time, time wise to 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 do that all in one session. And uh, if it's okay with the department and your minister, uh, as normally we can raise our questions in writing and for the, the, for the answers to be given back to us. If, that, if we can make that arrangement, uh, I'm sure that uh, it would be okay with, um, with, with the whole committee. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Lamaskakni. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, uh, I... Uh, close the meeting and thank you very much for being here.